Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, here to usher you in into the Friday. It is April 8th. A lot of stuff happening this weekend, especially on a Saturday night. There's like, feels like there's like t 10 performances happening on Saturday night, so there's definitely a lot to look forward to as you go into the weekend. I have a special video for you guys highlighting Do They Just Drew once again, and it is their season finale of season two. Season two has been going on for about three years now, but I'm not going to mention that. Anyways, let's, uh, other things I'm going to talk about, City Council, a lot of things happening. They're going to get dive deeper. I'm going to dive a lot deeper into how um, Rogers International Security has been working with the uh, homeless population at the encampments, Johnson Street, and more for my City Council report. So let's begin anew with some things that are happening um, up in the uh, Salish Kootenai uh, tribal lands up in Kalispell area roughly. Uh, there's a big land swap that's happening from the uh, Salish Kootenai uh, Sovereign Nation and the federal government, which would transfer 29,000 acres of federal land to tribal officials. Governor Greg Gianforte sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Interior. Already existing federal lands will be swapped with the tribes, which is slated to save Americans billions of dollars in taxes. Senator John Tester introduced a Montana White Water Rights Bill Act in 2016. By the time it was passed in December 2020, it contained two additional details, the land exchange and the transfer of the National Bison Range from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services to the Salish Kootenai management. So one of the big things that is going on, especially with the tribal lands, is that they're trying to uh, breed uh, bison buffalo. This is something that's uh, majorly happening more in terms of eastern Montana, but there's just a lot of uh, kind of like a reclamation project going on there in terms of trying to breed and have wild buffalo in their sovereign nature, nature in their lands and stuff like that. So this is slated to take five years to determine the boundaries and a contract with the tribe, which is considered a sovereign nation within America. In other news, Missoula, the city urban boundary estimated 1.1 million tons of carbon dioxide annually, annually or roughly 12.1 tons of carbon emission per person per year. This was on the cusp of a greenhouse gas emissions report done two weeks ago. The Missoula Current reported on how Missoula plans to cut emissions by 2050, but the very real issue is growing even more so in the international community. The UN and IPCC International Government Panel on Climate Change have stated this, it's now or never. Of course, it's always now or never a lot of times, uh, but BBC did a follow-up story is ba to basically tell the world that this Russian thing is being exploited by the world, uh, the whole drill baby drill thing um, mindset um, with gas prices going up, meet, people are looking for short-term conveniences, and uh, which will have long-term consequences with the concept of more drilling. So big business, bottom line, money, get in the way of any kind of thoughtful solution in terms of climate change. Even if all the policies to cut carbon emissions uh, that governments had put into place by the end of 2020 were fully Im implement implemented, the world will still warm by 3.2 degrees Celsius this century. If we're able to be on the right track and the, uh, if we get on the right track pretty much like today, we would have an increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius. And I was thinking about this er as well as I'm going off script and it was just like, you know, like our threshold for pain in terms of like carbon emission and um, can kind of just be, we keep on pushing the chains back further and further. And we're just like, oh, 3.2 degrees, it's no big deal. And then like 10 years from now, it's just like uh, 5.5, uh, we might, maybe. And then, you know, once it gets too catastrophic, I don't know. I, I think we've really just kind of numbed ourselves to that kind of ideology because I'm the probably the numbest person when it comes to uh, um, uh, climate change and stuff like that. And most countries, uh, other countries are, in full swing and uh, are trying to figure out ways to prevent climate change. And yeah, anyways, individuals have been taking bikes, buses, and cutting down their emissions all they want, but the gaslighting has continued for companies using fossil fuels, coal, and various other natural gases to keep the lights on. Uh, it's a systematic problem that needs to change, but that means the powers in place would have to make less, which is bad for them and therefore ain't going to happen. Um, it's kind of like how many people in Missoula think they can actually change the world from Missoula. You got to leave Missoula to change the world. You can't be in Missoula to change the world. Think about that. Coming back to Missoula, we also live in an inversion that not only keeps in the warm weather, but also comparatively all those CO2 emissions as well. So perhaps they could do a test during the summer when the skies are clear, but then again, I'm sure they did test uh, throughout the year. Anyways, you have, okay. 
And then one of the things about inversions too is that, especially during fire season, so we're going to get right into the fire season, uh, is the inversion kind of traps a lot of the smoke that comes down here. And at this point, you know, with the concept, fire season isn't necessarily a term that was uh, really existed 10, 20 years ago, but it, it is pretty much uh, a staple in Montana and most around the United States. I mean, of course, at this point, Montana, any place that has trees will have to deal with potential forest fires that can spark at pretty much any time, mostly in the summer here up north, California has the worst. Um, over the last year, the National Integr uh, Integrity uh, Fire Center, sorry, if I, out of Boise, Idaho, released information for potential fires based on drought and precipitation. I'm gonna throw up this slide for you guys. This image is from the assessment from April to July of this year. The top right is the one that emphasizes how bad droughts can affect potential fires. Participation is another trend in Montana, especially Western Montana, um, gets the bulk of the rainfall, uh, the annual average is about 15 inches a year, while the national average is about 38 inches everywhere else. But Montana also has snowpack in the mountains, which is good for us in the west, but as you get further and further out from um, to the eastern Montana, you have less and less rain, and we've had record droughts for the last two, three years. Experts, uh, here's an excerpt from the NIFC. Fire activity continued to increase across the southern area with the geographical area now at the preparedness level four. So level four, you know, like you have like, you have five, you have five levels and like severe fire danger is five and then four is just a little bit low, moderate to severe. So fire activity also continued to increase the south southwest California and across the plains of the Rocky Mountain area. Generally periods of Increased activity coincided with the widespread dry and windy conditions from the southwest throughout the plains with the most intense crucial fire weather conditions of the spring observed March 29th, 2022 across the southern and central plains. If you were to look around um, back in Missoula, back in the Lolo fire of 2017, you saw smoke skies over Missoula. The fire started uh, probably... Um, Wait, wait, I already, I wrote this down too. It, uh, the fire started July 15th and it went well into September 24th. Like that was, a, that's a huge chunk of the summer pretty much gone just because of the smoke inhalation and all that stuff. It was really bad. And um, not something that sits uh, well with a lot of people is uh, the Ukraine war and uh, with the mass graves that have been found, just like mass grave sites, people being executed, um, it just a lot of overall things going on as well. And it's just the overall compounding interest that Russia seems to be accumulating through this conflict. Uh, biggest worries now is the airstrikes being done. Um, Ukraine President Valerian Zelensky pleading for Western uh, allies to have anti-missiles to protect their people and their cities. Um, and at this point, it all seems that the West and many of their allies have been consciously uncoupling with Russia and the respect uh, and representatives from the UN, human rights organization, and more as the horrors of this war continue. Um, and that's all I'm going to mention it because that's probably the only thing that you've been kind of hearing about is nothing but this war. So let's jump right into uh, some good news. KBJ or Katanya, Katanya, uh, South Katanya Brown Jackson will serve on the Supreme Court after uh, three uh, GOP members voted in favor uh, out of uh, the rest of them. So it was 53 for yes and 47 for no. KBG, uh, so one of the things is that after having the GOP grasp on the idea that KBJ wasn't tough enough on child predators, because that wasn't true. Jackson rejected these assertions, explaining that in the case where she uh, deviated from federal sentencing guidelines, she basically uh, sentenced the same exact way as every other federal judge did. So basically uh, did what other federal court justice did, but since politicians with no judicial experience asserted themselves on this, it became if it was me, I lock them up forever kind of situation. But regardless, she has the schooling and the skills to pay those bills, and we can go back to arguing over the finite details of another person who has the unfortunateness of being in front of Congress uh, for some kind of job hearing or any kind of hearing whatsoever, regardless of what, what side you're on. It's, it's all just a mess at this point. Sorry about my opinion, but that's about that. And those are the, a lot of the news items that are happening in and around the world. Um, let's jump right in, and we're going to uh, throw it over to Dude I Just Drew, uh, here is Rowan Lemus, our host.
made it. We're gonna start season, and then season three starts, or, or whatever. But like, we're gonna make this the best finale that we can. We switch off after after every drawing. And Todd's phone. Does uh, six figures count? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, our own coin. Gender swap, something other. Each I... other. <laughs> wait, 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 what, what, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait. It'll help me make you look fabulous. Ah, fabulous. I don't know, Gir girl, girl body, Gir girl. This big Woo! curve. Whoa! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow! How does one draw humans again? You draw. I only did one. Sorry, Ron. Uh, it's, but it's, it's you. fine. It's, is it me? Yeah, it's you. <laughs> it's me. I don't know what I'd draw myself. I'd just draw myself as a stick figure like this. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> it's Mackenzie! <laughs> Make me at, like K pop main look. K pop. <laughs> what, what's wrong with the future? I'm making sure that I see it all. <laughs> don't mess up those glasses. I gotta draw what makes glasses. me smart, obviously. It's the, it's the <laughs> smart, it's what... It, <laughs> wow. That's a good, it's alright. That's good. That's, that's smug look. <laughs> Kirby Mouthful Mode hit Carby. What? Carby. K Kirby? From the new one? Okay. Oh. From the car, car version. <laughs> yes. You'll see what I draw. I'll draw I know what you mean. Turbo <laughs> has a little, little oh. thing. Look at him. I want to say there's a blush on mine. Slightly impaled. Whoa! On my head. I just went out of focus for a second. Yeah, you know. How do you draw cars? How do you draw cars? <laughs> That's a good question. I'll, I'll get back to you on that after. What <laughs> happened to the eraser? Did you chew it off? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I know you. I know you like. You wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You chewed it off. I didn't mean it. I didn't. No, it wasn't. It wasn't me. <laughs> Those are huge. His eyes. Is that <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, Undertale, dude? Oh, I angry see. Carrot. <laughs> All right. <gasps> yes, angry Carrot. Alright. Yes, an angry Carrot. What's oh. going on over here? I'm gonna make him angry. Damn. You didn't hear about this house. Don't smoke him. Don't smoke him. Look at That's that. what Rowan Look at does. Bam. <laughs> what? I had a little explosion. Like, we're gonna see those muscles. We're gonna see the turning. muscles. The veins. That is. Kind of looks like he's gonna be the first one in the gym there for a second. Mm -hmm. Surprise, he is. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like how more. skinny I'll his some. neck gets. What bottom? He doesn't need a bottom. What bottom he either. can float. What bottom? Imagination what? can go anywhere. <laughs> Rowan's sitting in a chair wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny. Whoever wrote this. <laughs> you already see where it's going. Yeah. <laughs> you already see where it's going. If I could do this, I would. Put, put some my fingers, I got it. Shark looking hands. Oh my shark. <laughs> 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 like the noise. <laughs> I, 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 I got scared. I was going to fall. I, 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 got, I got like no joke. I got scared. You actually referenced this. I mean, this is, was actually what I was going to do. Was I was actually going to do this, so... You were going to do that? Mm -hmm. I guess you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> Whoa, that's really close. Like, uh, ah, whoa! Yeah. It's me! <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking absolutely fabulous. Yeah, it's me, fabulous. <laughs> wow. 
post-apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. Post-apocalyptic. By Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders post-apocalyptic. What does Bernie Sanders look like? What, gla glasses, Larry David. You know what Larry, what Larry David looks like? No, I don't know what he looks like. You guys explain. <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep doing it. This is awesome. Exactly what he looks like. You're, you're, oh my god, are you, are you? He knows what Bernie looks like. That looks exactly like Bernie Sanders. Really? Oh I, no. Hobble gobble? <laughs> it's Kirby. <laughs> anyway, do me better. Do, do, do. There's like a big, big old, big old cloud of destruction. I'm going. <laughs> and then you're like, mmm, that looks tasty. Oh no, it tastes like broccoli. I, and then I love just the fact push, gone. That, this looks like a tree. I'm sorry. If I make it look like an explosion, it's like there we go. Well that was the end of season two and that was the rest of Rowan that you saw today. She just stole my outro. <laughs> <laughs> she just... Easy, well there. Easy, thanks for coming. Woo! Hey, woo, alright. Great episode. Great to have you on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Um, bye! Bye! That's it. Bye, everybody! Bye! Hey guys, welcome back. It is time for Pre-Critic, where I pre-judge a movie based on absolutely nothing. Hey, it's chilly out there, my dogs. It's time to start off with Sonic 2. Uh, welcome to the origin of furry gamers. We have Sonic 2 or Sonic the Hedgehog 2 uh, Electric Boogaloo. We have Sonic trying to live his best life in the public's eye because every origin story has a superhero type hiding their identity. This time we bring him into the fold to be like, okay, so now that everyone knows who he is, everyone's like, what have you done for me lately? And then more things happen and then that's when you'd be like, that's what I've done for you lately and that's basically the movie. All right, so we introduce a character named Tails, which for the, some of you know that is uh, his annoying sidekick who's always like, Sonic! And then he's like, oh, okay, cool. So but Sonic voiced by Ben Schwartz again and also Tails who's actually voiced by, you know, the video game, cartoon, Tune, all sorts of things who's been voiced in the same person for quite some time now which is pretty cool uh, they just couldn't find that right uh, star power to do it as well even though you know it was the pandemic but uh, again is back as the hyperactive rodents in the sequel to a movie that did very well enough to justify a sequel hey if you make more money than you spend boom it's considered a success you paid all your people um, except for the PAs but regardless of that they're just happy to be there most people uh, watch perhaps another repeat you know a movie might be bad when jim carrey announced that last week he was ready to retire uh ambulance uh ambulance uh from the series of movies that came up with movies basically by looking at things um clorox wipes um soundboard uh headphones that's a good movie uh comes ambulance um a story about bank robbers who take uh, hostages inside, yes, you guessed it, an ambulance uh, an, or an EMT vehicle. Stockholm Syndrome is strong in this movie about brothers trying to pay their very real, very relatable things, hoping they make it or the money making it to the right people in the end while they go to jail. Perhaps the banks are to blame, perhaps society. Up next, with the support of her family and the man she loves, the 14th child of a modest family will become the most famous singer in the world. Uh, I've never heard of her, honestly. I'm sure there's a lot of people in Europe watching this show being like, you don't know who this is? And then I think to myself, like, who in Europe cares about Missoula? Anyways, I've never heard of it. It's a foreign film, so Hollywood is good about gaslighting us into watching a good old American movies made in Canada. Uh, actually, they have a lot of productions where they outsource to Canada. But regardless of that, this French comedy biopic will make you believe in singing again. But the songs are in English to make you perk up and be like, oh, cool. The rest of the movie is in French. And then, oh, there's some English singing. Okay, cool. This is something I can connect with because I speak English. Um, music biopics know how to get into the action of concerts and stuff and maybe show struggles to make them more relatable. Finally, we have a documentary cow in the long vein of pig with Nicolas Cage, lamb with Numi Rapace, and now we have a full bovine in cow. This documentary is about projecting our personalities onto some cows. Um, two, especially, because the whole documentary crew follows two cows. That's the movie. That's what you need to know. 
I'm assuming they'll have some music and stuff there to make it sad if one of them goes to slaughter. I probably shouldn't have said that. But regardless, that is your uh, movie selection that's coming out this weekend and more. And also, one of the thing, movies that are coming out that I'm kind of excited for, even though I, it, it goes against my archetype to mention that I like movies, um, <laughs> is that Everything Everywhere All at Once will be playing at the Roxy this weekend. So I look forward to checking that out sometime this weekend. All right, so up next, we have a brand new dub and stuff um, featuring Bar 20 Rides Again from 1935. <laughs> hey guys, playing poker? Uh, yeah. Well, have a good day. Uh, second thoughts? I could give you a push. Well... Well, don't just stand there. Come on in, brother. Oh, listen. My farm's falling on some hard times. I need your help. Hmm, how much is it going to cost this time, brother? Listen, our parents could only send one of us to college, and guess who went to college? I got a scholarship, and you used the money that they raised to go to college and goof around for seven years. What was that? Ugh, you know damn well that you can't force a kid to go to college when he didn't even want to go to college and expect him to actually study or go to classes. Hmm, well, brother... I guess I'll give you some money after all. You do need it more than I do. Sounds like a storm's a coming. Uh, yeah. Hmm. You better get on that horse and get on out of here with my money. College debt, running a farm, and all this in the 1930s. But somehow the westerns. Hmm. Anyways. I'll give you your money, and you'll come back like you would do every time for our little family exchange reunion. This is it, Clancy. Uh, what is it? The last time I'm ever going to see you again. I'll give you your money, and then you leave. Uh, y yeah. Listen, I I'll promise to visit, and not ask oh, for I money. Oh, I know you will, but it is in your nature. And I goated the audience. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for your City Council Report, where we're going to talk about a lot of different things happening. But one of the things that keep on coming up during public comment is the uh, uh, the Rogers International Security. So kicking things off is Joe from last week talking about it. Um, I'm formally educated in uh, mathematics, applied mathematics. Uh, so I deal with a lot of data. Um, and I can't really, for the life of me, understand why this is such a talking point. Uh, <laughs> Because what essentially you did, right, is uh, you replaced a public police force with a private police force. And uh, they don't even have to wear chest cameras. They, don't, they, they aren't even subject to all the regulation that a public police force would be subject to. So uh, it's entirely unsurprising then that calls to the police would be down, right? That's exactly what we would expect. That's the, the null hypothesis, to use the nerdy term. Uh, perhaps the only thing more egregious than their existence at the camp would be if they were bad at their job and you still had to call the police that much. So I don't really think that's a very compelling argument uh, to have those folks there. Um, and the other part is this testimonial thing that's usually from city officials and leads uh, in NGOs. And for that, um, I would just like to say that there are confounding variables, right? People who head up NGOs, people who work for the city need to have a working relationship with city council, with city officials, and with MPD. And if you step on a bunch of toes, you're going to make your lot, job a lot harder. And I, you know, as someone who, again, is very pro-Second Amendment, carries a gun a lot, I will tell you, People don't like to have prolonged conversations with big guys, especially big white guys with guns on. They just, they get, it's uncomfortable. All right. So basically, um, Joe kind of went on a, a little bit more about this. The numbers just didn't really um, um, meet up, and he's all about human dignity. A very strong point made by Joe, but this is a pilot program within a newer operation shelter. However, like I said last week, we have uh, the option to discontinue this contract if need be. The library has Phoenix security, and they don't carry guns per request for our library staff and their officials. I can I can't also ignore the big white guy with a gun. Hey, Missoula's very white, regardless of how many people in our town would like diversity. That's just being said. Let's, okay, up next we have Matt Larson, who brings up how our current police department is handling their overtime. 
as you may recall, a year ago, there was a study that was approved through this same council um, where we divided the uh, patrol wards up into 12 wards from seven or eight. Um, and it basically increased the average staffing hours for each police officer to 10 hours and 45 minutes from eight hours. Um, this is troublesome because it was paid for half by the police officers union and it was instituted by chief white who is from chp who has a history of overcharging for overtime hours at construction sites specifically in la there were 52 chp officers indicted for doing this um this is the reason why the uh the union approved this it just racks up our overtime hours on an already understaffed department, as Chief White classifies it. Um, this is intentional and a misuse of funds. We need to stop this type of activity, and we need to figure out how to appropriately staff our police and not misuse our overtime hours. So basically, uh, what Matt was referring to was there was an article in the Missoula Current uh, about a week or so ago where they mentioned that the police have already gone past half of their budget. We're uh, in the uh, dawn of our fourth month into the fiscal year 2022, and the police department have already used uh, half of their overtime. So that's what he's referring to back in there. Um, it's something that kind of just kind of went over my head as well. But yeah, it's uh, you can really uh, connect the dots because uh, the city also mentioned that they have less calls towards MD Missoula police department because of Rogers International. If there was an urgent uh, for lack of oversight from our elected official, officials, this would actually be it. Uh, Daniel Carlino responds to public comment regarding Rogers International security, and this is what he had to say. I think that's not quite like a security force. I think that's more like a police force, especially when you have the authority to use um, force or lethal force. So I just want to back up the public commenter about that and just say that I don't agree with that, but I do agree with paying the city's bills. So hopefully we'll continue the Rogers International private police force conversation another day. Okay. And so later on in the meeting, they actually do continue to talk a little bit more about uh, Rogers International Security. And they did this during uh, Committee of the Whole where they dive deeper into the people who, are, who work for the POV and have worked directly with the Rogers International Security. So uh, in Committee of the Whole, Operation Shelter is up as they begin to wrap up the Johnson Street shelter by April 18th while keeping the uh, temporary safe, safe outdoor uh, sites for some time. There are plenty of resources available for those folks and for those of you looking to find out more information, go to engagemissoula.com. Honestly, this is where you're like, oh, when am I gonna be done with this project? Engagemissoula.com is probably like the one place you can go to be like, oh, so they're doing this thing and this is gonna take, this is expected how long it's gonna take and so forth. Uh, they don't really have too much in the terms of like exact date when it's gonna be ready, but they just have their projections and they just post the projects online as well. So let's uh, kick things off. We're gonna throw it over to uh, Emily Armstrong with who's been talking about some of the outcomes from Operation Shelter. Um. But these numbers, I will also say, were uh, taken at the beginning of March, so they may have shifted a little bit since then. But 98% um, of folks that are served at the emergency winter shelter are low, uh, extremely low income, which is below, at or below 30% of area median income. Um, there were 567 unduplicated individuals served as of February 28th, so that number is likely a little bit higher at this point. Um, on the busiest night of the year, which was February 23rd, there were 117 people sleeping at the shelter. And on the lowest night, it was um, 45 people. And that was in the very beginning of November when the shelter first opened. <laughs> so that's kind of an overview of that operation this year. You can see here, there are many individuals who really value the use of the emergency winter shelter. It's a project that is truly intended to keep people alive through the cold winter months in Montana. Um, and, and we've seen a lot of success with that. We haven't lost anyone due to the elements this year or last year. Um, and, and so it's just a really critical um, partnership between the city and the county. And, so just give you a kind of a brief overview of what kind of happened in the past, which kind of uh, prompted these kind of emergency winter shelter in the first place. And as you heard, not one person died from the cold this year and last year, according to Emily. Michael Moore, not the director, uh, spoke about this for many years here in Missoula, uh, about medical staff were being bombarded with folks who suffered from different forms of hypothermia and anything that's impacted by uh, intense cold weather and other various issues from Montana's cold winters. People of Missoula came to council to, uh, to apply pressure to create this winter 
warming opportunity. Uh, one of the things is that we had one of the coldest winters a couple years ago, um, and part of this prompted the Salvation Army to be like, hey, let's uh, let's provide our, our new building, our new facility space as a warming area for people to go. The POV had very little uh, interaction, and but then at, at, over time they start building, bridging the divide and bridging the gap, and uh, now they don't use the Salvation Army as a uh, a, a place for people to be. They moved them over to the Johnson Street, which is off of uh, Johnson and North Avenue, and that is their temporary, temporary uh, emergency winter shelter. And then after that, one of the big things that happened was the temper. The, it was these encampments. So the whole idea is that we they used private property and they basically leased this property just to hold the encampment of these people. And then just this last year with Operation Shelter, they talked about um, some of the. Uh, you know, Rogers International. But before we jump into that, Emily also talks about designated camping sites near the water treatment plant, and this is what she had to say. We are pretty early into this operation, but we've noticed um, since opening definitely a decrease in urban camping um, in other areas of the community. We are working on um, establishing processes to better track number of residents served. The, the um, management structure at the site is still in development as far as management staff and, and full-time staff out there. Um, so that's been something that we've been trying to build out since, since opening is um, staff who can better track outcomes and, and better um, yeah, respond to resident needs on site. Um, since opening as of the collection of these numbers, which again was end of February, early March, there had been only 14 calls to Missoula Police and 50% were just calls for extra parole or um, officer advice as opposed to responding to an actual um, crisis in action. Six total calls were to Missoula Fire Department since opening and mobile support team. So that's combined, six calls to MFD and MST combined. Um, so again, quite low. And then, like I mentioned earlier, access to clothes donations, smudging supplies, harm reduction kits, pet food. We have just really, really wonderful partners who have all kind of rallied around the site. And when we run out of cat food or dog food, we just reach out to Humane Society and they come and deliver more. And it's um, really a fabulous partnership between so many providers across the community. Which uh, brings me to my next topic. Uh, one of the things is that partnership. Partnership with many different organizations. Uh, you've, we've had um, United Way of Missoula, and um, by the numbers, everything has decreased in terms of uh, many of the issues. But of course, there's always going to be issues here and there. And in the past, areas near these shelters have had complaints from business owners and homeowners of people camping in urban areas. Uh, you know, there's defecation and urination in, this, in the alleyways near businesses and stuff like that. And so far, the outdoor spaces have had a 49% success rate in terms of getting from tents to solid roof over their heads. So they've wanted to uh, figure out ways to have another transitional outdoor space, but that's for next time. So Jim Hicks, with the team that has talks with the ho uh, homeless and is with the Christian Life Center, talks about Rogers International and his interaction with it. So here's Jim Hicks. And we can have a, a bigger, bigger, point of view of, of how we operate. Uh, just let me mention just real quickly, um, Rogers International has been a key point uh, in a team member in this. Uh, their de-escalation when that has been needed has been there. If there's been any glitches, uh, just a memo or a set down meeting has taken care of those things. Uh, they build relationships with our partners and with our clients on site. Um, Actually, we've, uh, we've used them to help keep, uh, lack of a better term, looky-loos or community members who come on to uh, say, actually, you know, you're trespassing. This is private property. You can't come and look around. Uh, so we've, uh, they've been helpful in that aspect as well. Um, we're just really happy to, to see the progress that's been. And uh, I, I mean, I could go on with stories because uh, that's the best thing is uh, when you see somebody that's uh, actually lived at Reserve Street for six years uh, a few days ago get their own house. I mean, that's why we do what we do. All right, so that was Jim Hicks, and I also wanted to mention as well, um, as we're moving forward, is that with the security system that is in place, a lot of times people hire security firms to protect the assets, and in this case, the city uh, uh, had uh, Rogers International treat the people of these temporary safe outer spaces, the POV, as the clients as um, 
their assets worth protecting. So if you think about it like that, it doesn't seem as uh, for, uh, forbearing, especially as they are armed up as well. But like I mentioned, the city's uh, council meeting, please protect the city while security protects assets. In this case, the homeless are our assets. Jim also made an interesting point that it, uh, homeless view themselves a certain way compared to how residents in Missoula view them and try to bridge that gap to better understand. And that's the one thing that he wants to hope. And one of the people with the Hope Rescue Mission that I did interview a couple uh, years ago during the height of the pandemic when the first temporary safe outdoor space was being implemented out off of uh, Highway 93. And here is April Seat uh, talking about um, hopefully bridging the gap between residents and homeless. We're able to walk alongside of them through that process. Um, and so it's just been really great to see our community come together and all the agencies and organizations and how well we've been able to work together to see some real impact in people's lives. Um, so I, I really wanted to share that and being able to work one on one with these folks and giving them a, a place of security where they're no longer in this area of being um, in survival mode, they can relax. And then when they have that opportunity to feel safe, they're now it's like, how can I change? What new I need to do? So I, I just love the fact that we're able to be there with them to walk through that process and, and speaking into security. I think that everybody deserves to feel safe. Um, of, you know, we, we transitioned these folks from one area and they weren't all understanding of what we wanted to do. But now that they see that we really want to keep them safe, um, having security there has been amazing because they're not there just to, um, like show force or anything like that. Like everyone said, we are, they are building community and relationships. And um, it also helps us as staff members to be able to know when we're not there, it still is secure. And those folks that are staying there are um, still accountable to the rules and the agreements that they have signed. So that all right. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things going on here as well. And one of the things that I also want to bring with this is Captain Rosley from the police department talks about uh, the calls and uh, operation from the Missoula Police Department. And this is what he had to say. I can tell you that um, the trend has been uh, we've seen a, a reduction of about 50 calls uh, per month per site. Uh, so that's the Johnson Street site, we're down about 50 plus calls uh, from this time last year. Pavarello, the same. Um, obviously, the authorized campsite wasn't uh, wasn't in service last year at this time, but um, uh, for the month of March, we had about 22 calls directly to the authorized campsite. Um, we, we generally don't go inside the authorized campsite unless we're called there and it's only for criminal activity. Rogers uh, security pretty much handles the rest of that kind of stuff. Um, so that's just pretty much what we're trying to stay on top of. Uh, a lot of the calls for um, you know complaints about garbage or vehicles piling up outside of the authorized campsite um, are not going through 911. A lot of those are coming either directly to me or Charmel at um, Code Compliance. Okay, so that's what um, uh, Officer uh, Rosley had to say about that. And one of the big th things also moving forward is that this is John Petroff of the fire department, and he's talking about the mobile crisis unit. Um, and part of this is like uh, for, you know, mental health emergencies and folks going through some time where they might feel as though that the police might be a, more, of a, uh, more of an intense presence than it would be otherwise. And so John Petroff uh, talks a little bit more about this site so I guess that's something that is just really positive. We're able to offer something to the clients that's less traumatizing, um, better service, and then try to come up with other other solutions other than jail and ED as we kind of are hoping for. So um, I just think it's really important that, you know, we keep working and supporting each other like we are. And, and I think that's been something that, you know, all these all these projects have done for the city. and. Yeah, it's been it's been great collaborative effort amongst everybody.
All right. So that's pretty much the last of my quotes for you guys as well. And to wrap things up, uh, thus far the fire department has fielded over 600 calls and in their efforts have been providing over uh, an average of an hour and a half per client um, in the needs of these emergency mobile crisis unit. Sometimes people need more time to handle stressful situations and this meeting as a pat on the back for many partners in our community helping folks going through tough economic times. This is a new system in place building upon the Palo Verde Center and their partners in this community and the city directly get involved rather than allocating folks to the shelters. Now folks have many options as they transition out of homelessness into more permanent housing. If you're watching this, just know these folks don't have access to this, to this kind of information and it's easy to get lost in the in the fold of things. Uh, most of the things is that people would rather just ignore them and just want them to go somewhere else to deal with this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, another potential issue looking uh, forward to in the future is that, you know, the future funding. Like we had most of this, the most of the projects emerging winter shelter had a lot of support through the cares act and the american rescue plan and other covid related funding will end at some point um, they're not going to have any kind of new monies new stimuluses everything's going to basically be kind of like turning back into some kind of normality and that's just something that we should also be looking out for as well as that we'd have to uh, raise the kind of money that needed for this uh you know, all these assets and all these things that we've been invested in in terms of uh, combating the a lot of these homeless issues. Um, just with people in general, because, hey, Missoula's rent's going up. You know, it, we can talk even more about the house, housing issue, and I talk a lot about the housing issue. Um, you know, the state of Montana's minimum wage, like, it's eight dollars twenty-five cents for minimum wage. Missoula is trying to keep up with the, uh, you know, fifteen dollar minimum wage, thirteen dollar minimum wage. You know, some places are doing seventeen dollar minimum wage uh, for starting wages in a lot of these kind of uh, service industry places. And then, you know, uh, I've met a couple people who are just like go in there and just like, oh, uh, I apply for this job that says it's going to give me nineteen dollars an hour, but they said that I have to start off with fifteen dollars an hour, and they'd graduate me up there like that like, to that point after I've been there for like a couple months. Don't do those jobs. <laughs> Money up front, <laughs> just advice. But regardless of that, that's kind of like ends my city council report. I wanted to also mention that um, for more information about uh, the city of Missoula, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website for finding out more information about you know government permits and more. Um, also, uh, Engage Missoula is a new website that I've recently discovered and have been very uh, crucial when it comes to uh, being like, oh yeah, this is this is a project that's going on. This is cool. I want to see more about you know some of the projects and permitting that um, Missoula is doing, and it's a great way for your voice to be uh, heard. Um, I think that what the city's trying to do is trying to get more people on that and uh, try to uh, field some more uh, you know crowdsourcing some ideas and some uh, ways to uh, get some feedback from the people of Missoula. So engage Missoula. You can find out more information by going to their website. You can even Google it to find out more information as well. So. So that pretty much does it for uh, my city council report. Up next, I also I have an art clip for you guys, but I just want you to, uh, there is a warning, some imagery might not be appropriate for some viewers out there, so you have been warned. So here's an art clip featuring uh, art of Brian McGuire at the Missoula Art Museum, and I thought this was extremely important to show.
Hey guys, welcome back. Yeah, um, I wanted to show that for sure because uh, Brian McGuire uh, um, is an Irish um, um, artist who uh, basically uh, wanted to represent uh, the horrors of war and all the human rights violations that were done um, basically in the, uh, the 1970 Civil War in Ireland between the conflict of uh, Ir Irish people who want independence versus the Irish who wanted to remain within the uh, United Kingdom. So, yeah, so I wanted to show that, and that will be shown um, well until August. So you guys can check that out, the Mizzou Art Museum. Free admission, free expression. Just walk right into the Mizzou Art Museum and enjoy uh, some of the mini art and, and the important works that they have there as well. All right, let's kick things off. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the events that are happening in the library. There's a lot happening this weekend as well. So uh, one of the things that they're doing is uh, the library is doing uh, movie night um, on uh, Worldwide Cinema um, uh, that's happening. Um, I, I probably should just stay on script, but there's a lot of things happening on here. But uh, Saturday night, they usually have a, mo a Worldwide Cinema. And this time, they're actually bringing down um, um, the directors and some of the filmmakers to talk about their movie while also showing at the same time. So I wanted to emphasize that, but I also wanted to mention some of the M MCAT and library stuff that are happening in the library today. Um, if you're interested in uh, learning about uh, having your kids, if you have a kid who's like five or younger, who's preschool, want to get them engaged with books and stuff like that, they have Tiny Tales and Story Time here at the Public Library on the second floor starting at 10.30 a.m. Uh, MCAT has our um, um, classes and workshops in the afternoon at, uh, at three and four. One is for Photoshop and one is for Adobe Premiere. And we have an instructor who and teaches those as well. At noon today, uh, Yarns and Watercolor are going to be at the uh, public library on the fourth floor in the Blackfoot Conference Room and, of course, the uh, Cooper Room. You can't miss them. There's only two main public rooms in uh, the library on the fourth floor. All right, one of the things that are happening in the, everywhere else in, in, in the city of Missoula is the Swift Water Rescue class. The Montana River guides uh, Swift Water Rescue tracking. The Whitewater Rescue Technician course is an intensive 24-hour class with a half day of classroom instruction followed by a two day of development and practice and skills on the river. While the initial emphasis is safety and self-rescue, the class offers an in-depth look at reading water, recognizing and avoiding hazard, quick rescue techniques, river, uh, river, river boarding, boat-based rescues, dealing with the boat wraps and um, entrapments. So this is a great opportunity for people who are getting, want to get certified and want to be uh, tour guides on river rafting and stuff like that. So this is starting this morning um, at 9 a.m. So th this, you know, this isn't going to be the only class. I'm just telling you that this is going to be an ongoing thing as well. So um, Missoula Food Bank meal distribution. This is, does not discriminate based on your economic and how much you make. Uh, Missoula Food Bank meal distribution. They're open from 10 a.m to about 1, 1 p.m. on Wednesday and Friday. Of course, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, it's from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., so you have a good chunk of the day where you guys can get some cheap and uh, affordable food from the Missoula Food Bank. Um, and they're off of Wyoming Street across from the West Side Lanes Bowling Center. Um, Candemonium is going to be at the uh, Southgate Mall this year's annual Can Food Structure and Design Build Competition brings Missoula into outer space to help blast out hunger in our community. Missoula Food Bank and Community Center has paired local businesses and organizations with architects and engineers to create a larger-than-life structures made entirely of food to complete for fun awards, all while donating high-quality foods to help those facing food insecurities in our community. Sober Walking Group, the Phoenix of Missoula, is a national nonprofit that builds sober activities across the United States. Uh, all Phoenix events are free of charge if anyone with 48 hours of conscious sobriety and their allies pre-register on our website, thephoenix.org. Hercules, happening at the MCT, Missoula Children's Theater. Who doesn't want to meet the legendary strongmen of the ancient world? Join us for a Herculean saga of... Uh, True meaning and friendship and strength. There's plenty of action and some mistaken identity to unravel our tale. What wondrous creatures will Hercules encounter in this mystical, mystical world? And this is going to be a children's theater play, and it's happening at 5 p.m. at the MCT Center for Performing Arts. Um, Worldwide Cinema, like I said, is going to be at the Cooper Room. Uh, it's going to be from 6.30 to 9 p.m. tonight. And just so you guys know, the library closes at 6, and they have a throughway to get let in. Uh, so late entry is not allowed because they will lock the door at uh, 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 6.30. So the door, oh, actually the door is open from 6.15 to 6.45. The film starts at 6.30. Late entry is not allowed, so they will close the doors and you'll only be allowed to leave from then on out. Uh, so yeah, it's the movie is 
Wild Land, and it's from Denmark, and we have uh, the directors apparently going to be talking about them. So that's going to be cool. I don't know if... I, I do have to double check that, but you should double check it as well. It might be on the library's website, but this is what I got from MizzouEvents.net. All right, World Beats Dance Party, one of the uh, funnest events, the best events that I would got to say. I love the percussion department over at the uh, the uh, music department at the University of Montana. And at 8 p.m. tonight, um, the University uh, Center Commons area. So this has got the UC Center, otherwise known as University Center Center. Uh, this event will feature dance music created by students from all over the world. This event is part of the World Fest Day 2020. 22. This free event is designated to promote intercultural and global awareness and appreciation. Happening in the University of Montana, this is all part of their uh, UM Global Engagement Office, International Student Association, Pacific Islanders Clubs will host. It is part of World Fest Days. It is an ongoing event well into April 15th. You can find out more information by going to umt.edu slash events for more details. Another thing that's happening is Dueling Piano at Staven Hoop. Monk's Bar is going to do a rock show. Um, Wild Prairie Smoke is going uh, to be at the Union Club. So as we're going further and further into the season, beginning of May is your typical downtown farmers market, Clark Fork River Market, People's Market. Um, that's going to be started in May, but if you are antsy to get some farmers market down, Saturday markets are going to be happening at the Orchard Homes, which is off of 3rd Street, or you can go to the Southgate Mall for the winter market from 9 to 1 p.m. And they pretty much keep it well within the, the vein of all that stuff from 9 to 1 p.m. as you go into the summer for the actual farmer's market. <laughs> All right, the resort at Paws Up 2 garage sale. Uh, so there's a garage sale happening in the Paws Up branch. Hey, take advantage of it because who knows how many uh, celebrities uh, was on that saddle. I don't know if they're actually selling a saddle because saddles are expensive. Uh, I come to learn. But anyways, this is happening. F um, it's, it was open for the public from uh, on March, but now they're doing it again today for their two-day garage sale happening from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, I believe it's happening today and oh, actually no it's happening on Saturday and it might be happening on Sunday as well so Saturday is the best chance to ch check it out and yeah check what other celebrities have uh, touched there when they're when they go up to uh, Montana to have a dude ranch experience anyways get ready for the home ownership class hey Homeward is a very important organization here in the city of Missoula. It helped me buy my house. It can help you buy your house. Homeward is a great, it costs up to $35 for the classes, but by completing this class, you're entitled to a $5,000 grant going towards your first home buy. And you don't have to pay it back. It's great. Um, and another thing is that they also educate you on the Human Resource Council, which gives you uh, an additional money with 0% interest. Um, but then again, you have to pay that money back if you do decide to go into a second house from your first house, but it really does help people buying their first forever home. Um, and you can find out more information by homeword.org. And that's not ward, it's the word as, as the words that are coming out of my mouth, just so you guys know. All right, Turkey Tactics, a hunting class for women. Uh, the uh, Deer Creek Shooting Center is hosting a spring turkey hunting calling demo and shotgun practice. This in-person class is an introduction to spring turkey hunt in the partnership with Artemis Sportswomen and National Wild Turkey Federation. We'll discuss shooting habits, biology, and behavior followed by a calling demo and practices. Get in depth with some uh, turkey tactics. That sounds fun. Uh, Easter Craft Market, Missoula County Fairgrounds. So we're getting into it. So Missoula County Fairgrounds is uh, having their Easter thing this weekend as well. There's a lot of things happening because it is, uh, is it actually Easter weekend? I'm not going to think about it. So anyways, they're doing an Easter craft market at the Missouri Fairground starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. So this is only the morning. There's so much going on. I got like 10 events for tonight. Uh, so, uh, so Easter craft market, 10 a.m. there. Um, Missouri Art Museum is doing a teen open work studio. So if you're somebody who is interested in art, they also have some snacks there as well. Starting at 1230 um, noon-ish. Uh, at the Missouri Art Museum Teen Open Studio. Um, it's, in, it's in the basement, you can't miss it. Okay, poetry writing workshop with Robert Lee is gonna be at the Missouri Public Library. You can do some poetry writing, or you can go to the MCAT drop-ins. Uh, the MCAT drop-ins are for kids age about eight to 14, and we do stop animation. Uh, we have stick bots, we got Legos, we got uh, whiteboards, we got a, a, a bunch of fun things for kids to do some stop animation. It's just a drop-in, but it is a good way for kids to get introduced into MCAT and being able to make some cool media movies and stuff. All right, hands-on science, magic of chemistry. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a bunch of things. They are open from Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to about 6 p.m. 
great opportunities for kids to get engaged in science. Library Teen D&D Dungeons and Dragons uh, every Saturday at 3.30. Um, Sundog North at Rumor Lounge. Okay, now we're getting into like all the bands, all the performances. So I'm going to name them all off for you. Sundog North is going to be at Rumor Lounge. Charlie Hopkins is going to be at Ten Spoon of a Winery and Vineyard. Yola is going to be at the Wilma. It's R&B music. Uh, live music with Tom Catmull will be at Cranking Land Public House. Um, live music, Madeline Hawthorne, Far Out West, will be at Free Cycles. Missoula Symphony Orchestra is playing Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. at the Denison Theater. Solid, State Karyo Solid Sound Karaoke is going to be at the West Island F uh, Fun Center. Um, Twin Void Back to Hard Times Tour is going to be at Monks. Uh, Britt Aronson band is going to be at the Union Club and then finally we're going to have some Badlander DJ club music and that's basically your weekend right then and there this just you have a, so you have your options for your Saturday folks and if you want to learn more information about what's going on you can go to missoulaevents.net oh you know I honestly thought I was going to go long this episode but I'm going to go short and I'm going to say hey thanks hey thanks for joining me and for uh, Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ranf.